You know how you get that audition in the booth that you really, really want to nail it, right? And you just need a little bit of direction. My next guest, Everett Oliver, is the solution to that problem. He is myboothdirector.com, and you go on there and you just boop, 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 put in your little information for him to call you, and he'll direct you. It's like it's like a miracle. What are three important things every voice actor should know? There's tons, but the three that stand out: how to build your career, how to market and brand your business, and how to maintain and really con have relationships with clients. I think those things are really, really important. I think that actors are missing out on those things. I think they're worried about bookings and bookings and bookings, but they're not seeing the overall picture of the actual voiceover business. And <clears throat> it's weird for me because I came from the union side of the business and I had to learn the non-union side of the business. And I feel like I was at a time where, especially working at the agency, that the union actors were specifically counting on the talent agencies to help them with their business and maintain those relationships and you know market and branding which really agents don't even necessarily have that time. But the non-union actors really are focused on all those three aspects. Agents can't do everything, you know? You have to take it upon yourself to really build your brand, build, you know, market yourself to, to so that the buyers know who you are. Because there's thousands of you guys who are auditioning for copies around the world. And I think union actors, if they, I guess if you want to use the word associate with non-union actors, they'll know what kind of sort of like competition is as far as what's out there. You know, it's not just, you know, union actors just counting on actor, counting on, I'm sorry, on your agents. Do you want to talk a little bit about your background first? Because I think your I think your business model is so interesting. I have a background in animation production, so I've worked on shows such as The King of the Hill and The Simpsons. I did a about a I did a year on The Simpsons, and I did about three years on King of the Hill. But the areas were kind of different. Um, I worked more with the animation artists and directors when I was on The Simpsons. When I worked on King of the Hill, I worked with the executives and kind of like the network as well. So I was kind of sort of like the in-between executive executive assistant liaison um, between the network and, and the animation studio. Um, so after doing that for a couple of years, then I went over to voiceover casting um, and I did that for about maybe 10 years. Working on shows such as um, Godzilla and Men in Black, Jackie Chan, Starship Troopers, um, Somebody, uh, big guy and rusty boy robot, uh, me, Eloise. I'm looking at my wall because they're all on my wall now. Um, so after I've done that for about yeah about ten to fifteen years, then um, Charlie Adler, my mentor, told me to you need to go work at a talent agency, and I kind of looked at him and I'm like, mm, I'm a little bit too old to be working at a talent agency. He was like, no, you need to work with actors and become a booth director. That's how that started with, you know, the booth directing. So I said, oh, and sure enough, AVO Talent had an opening for my booth. It was just in sync, just like that, the minute Charlie said it. So it was just like, oh, it's a perfect fit. And it was just perfect timing. So tell okay. us a little bit about what you do now. You know, I do tours. And so this is, you know, tour three that I've been doing this. Um, and I'm just, I just prepped for- Tour three for this year. For this year. Yeah. That I, you know, prepped. So, you know, I'm heading to Seattle in June, which is the first time. You know, my stomping grounds now has become San Francisco in July. Uh, I got a phone call from Dallas to come back in September. Um, I'm working on, you know, trying to go to Wolvo, Wolvocon in November, uh, you know, people will just throw out and have different events around the country. Hey, Everett, what are you doing? Uh, prepping, 
or working with a client. Hey, why don't you come to this event? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can schedule in, you know. So I just hop on planes and, you know, travel around the country, meet people. I am like a career maker. I, I really take actors come to me if they want to get into the voiceover industry, whether or not beginning, you know, or pro. And I connect them where they need to, if they want to get into an animated series, I work with them to help them get into animation. Or I help with them, you know, try to figure out if this is the right career for them. Mm -hmm. Because I'm really the type of person that I'm really upfront and I'm really direct in a very humorous way to say, mm, you need more training in this area or you need more training in this area. So what I currently do is I, um, besides being a booth director, direct actors on their auditions, do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I travel around the world <laughs> doing in-person workshops. I do online workshops. Uh, I help actors with their demos. So I do a lot of directing on their demos. Um, and then I, you know, consultations. I do tons and tons of consultations with actors um, just to kind of figure out where they are. And once I can home in where they are, then I just guide them in the right direction. I had just a quick question. Just tell me a little bit. So about your um, coaching for demos, is it just animation demos or is it for any kind of demo? Well, it's really mostly for animation, but I direct specifically. I get a lot of actors who say, I like your directing style. I direct through images. That's the emotion that I need you to be. Read the copy, go. And then I watch the actor transcend and they become the character. That's how I direct. I direct all through images. So there are some actors who I can work with who understand images. And there are some actors who don't. So then I have to come up with key words to say to the actor, okay, I need you to do this in order to get the performance out. And that's something that no one taught me. It just intuitively came to me. And I learned all that, this whole process through working at the agency. Last year for the Voice Arts Awards, I did direct, well, actually one of the coaches on their narration demo. So, and I got a nomination from it. So I figured, okay, I will put myself out there, but I wanna also, you know, I'm also producing as well. So I'm kind of co-producing mostly on animation, you know, demos and stuff like that. I partnered with somebody on the East Coast to work specifically on demos for animation on the East Coast. I'm handling more the animation demos here on the West Coast. So I'm kind of being pulled all over the place, so. Do you work with a specific engineer or studio when you do animation demos? Um, here in LA, I do. Um, I don't know if I should say the name. <laughs> That's why I got froze for a second there. <laughs> I didn't know if you want that. You're like, cut. <laughs> How do you find your clients? How do you make those contacts? Lots of referrals. Um, and social media. First thing I do actually is tweet. I tweet five days a week. I literally will either come up with a word or if an audition tip or something comes to me, I will tweet that out on three or four social medias. That's the first thing I do. Um, then I have to look at my calendars to see who am I working with that day or within the next coming days after I, if I have to prep to get those scripts out. And then it gets to be between, between the late afternoon and early evening that people start hitting me with auditions. And so then I have to at least block. I probably block between like four and like eight to nine auditions. So actors will contact me via text. I prefer them to go through the website because it's a little easier than them texting me because sometimes I shut my text messages off. When I go to workshops, people will, people will say, hey, you need to go see, you know, you need to go work with Everett because he'll make you become that character, make you stand out, make you, you know. So that's how really, I'm hustling. <laughs> All 
you know, the all the time. I'm on the go all the time. Seven days a week. Work seven days a week. I, you know, I enjoy what I do. I really, really enjoy what I do. I started to, it starts to, once I connect with actors, I could just, I, I just, there's something about it. I don't know. I like kind of step into them when I really connect to an actor. And I'm like, okay, I listen to them. And then things start coming to me intuitively. And then I know no, that agency is not right for you. That's not your market. Uh, you're not ready to do animation as of yet. Uh, the demo, no, you're not ready to do your demo yet. So I, you know, me being on my daily basis, I, you know, also check up on actors. Out of the clear blue, I'll message them on Facebook or on my call, which is, I love that. <laughs> I find it very enjoyable to just call <laughs> out of the clear blue sky interested in this one okay i mean i'm interested in all these this is why this is why i'm i've been doing this i mean i'm i've been finding all of this stuff very fascinating okay and stepping into mm -hmm. like you said but also stepping into other people's experiences and how they're conducting their business or their lives or right. their voiceover career it's so fascinating everybody's mm -hmm. so different mm -hmm. okay so everett what do you mean by teaching according to the market okay what i mean by teaching to the market is the whole United States, we're all different. The East Coast and the West Coast. Everyone who was raised on the East Coast, they learn the noun, verb, and adjective. And so they speak and articulate very well. And then living here for so many years, I noticed that on the West Coast, we don't articulate as much. We're very laid back. We don't honor commas. We just speak freely. And so when I'm traveling, I pick up on people's dialect. You know, I, I play with them and I'll say, get rid, of, get rid of your, the way you were taught in school. When I was in Chicago, I was like, oh my God, they all read the same. So I have to, when I teach, I have to teach according to the markets. Wherever you're getting, receiving copy, find out where you're getting the copy from and where the audition is going to. So that way you can read according to that region. Oh, this is really interesting, too, something that you had mentioned. So you had said you sometimes sense an actor needs a certain type of direction or coaching. How So how do you match a person to a director or voice coach if you feel they need something else? How do you match a person? I intuitively tap into them. So when I'm studying an actor, after I'm done with them, I go, okay, you, you, have, re you have received enough information from me. I've gotten you to a certain point. Now it's time for you to move on. So I go through, it's like images come to me. So coaches' faces will come to me as I'm talking to an actor or as I'm, you know, coaching and I'm like, mm, this is the coach you need to go to because this other coach is not a fit for you because of your personality. Or it just wouldn't jive because I can hear it. Sometimes I'll, something will just bother me and I'll go, no, you're not a right fit for that person or I'll get a list like the other day I did I was talking to an actor and I had two coaches in mind I said this is the first one you need to approach first not the second one hold off on it I'm just giving you in chronological order don't don't get them out of order yet mm -hmm. until I've gone ahead and at least I might even go ahead and reach out to the coach to make that connection and say this is where they are this is where they need to go. I'm just passing them on to you. When I'm doing workshops, I like to play when I do workshops. So my shoes come off. I want everybody to feel comfortable. And then I, you know, I want everybody, I bring them up because I want to hear them first what they can do. And then sometimes I want those little side curve balls at them. And I'm like, hmm, okay. Let me see, let me, cause I, this is what I do. I take their neck. So this is your upper register. This is your middle register. And this is your lower register. And I'll say, okay, so you're reading everything here. That's not your natural voice. Bring it down to your middle, bring it down to your middle voice and I'll point to it. And then the actor will, will start to really start to get into character. You're not, and then I'll stop them. 
you're not there yet. Bring it down a little bit lower. Then they start really getting into the character. I'm like, okay, okay. And then I'll tell them because they won't know because sometimes they'll talk up here. This is the range where you need to be, mm. like right here. But sometimes I want to stretch you for when you're down here. And then I can say, okay, because I did this with I did this with an actress commercially. I said, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to come down here to your lower register. She says, I don't normally talk down there. I said, just do me a favor, just do it. And she did it and she actually booked a job from doing that. She says, I had never spoken like that down there. I said, just a little bit, just come down, just, just slightly a little bit of register. And when she told me, cause we did two different takes for the audition. She said, oh yeah, they really like the lower register. I was like, I told you. You stepped out of your comfort zone. So that's what I like to do with actors. I like to, you know, play with them, see where they are, get them out of their comfort zone a little bit, you know, make them feel really comfortable. And then I just take it from there. So stuff just comes to me. And when it comes to me, I just go with it. So actors are scheduling with you in the mm -hmm. evening? Do they? Yes. Do, so they're waiting to get their auditions and then they contact you? Yes. And they say, Absolutely. I need you to coach me. Then, right, exactly. Okay, so how does that work? So... The process goes, they should go to the website, mybootdirector.com. Go to the contact page. On the contact page, I have your name, um, what type of audition is it, the date the audition is due, and that's it. Three basic things that they have to fill out. They send me an email. I receive the email. I say to them, my schedule is open for a specific time. Then I say to them, send me the copy of your audition and your first pass. So at least I know what kind of direction you're going to. Then once I've set up a time with them, I will set up a Zoom link to contact them and we'll do a face-to-face -face audition. And then either if I, depending on how I'm directing, if I direct stuff Let's say it's line numbered one through five and there's certain directions on the side of the copy. I like to, instead of reading one through five in order, sometimes I like to jump around because it takes time for an actor to get into character. So I'll say to either the actor, listen, read line three, read line five, read line two. It's all out of order. Set, uh, send me the edition and I will go ahead and I will edit everything for them. And then I would just send it back to them with a little extra fee. <laughs> <laughs> how much time do they normally take for how, how much time is this? Well, for normally the time it should take 15, it should take really 15 to 20 minutes okay. for an audition. Um, sometimes like I was working with an actor the other day, it took about an hour because he couldn't, I couldn't get them to go there. And so, you know, time is ticking and, and I'm throwing everything at them. I'm like, I need you to go there. You, you you haven't gone there yet. I need you to go into this deep, dark place for me to pull something out of you. I need you to be a psychopath. You're not there yet. <laughs> so it'll take time. So, but normally it should take 20 minutes to a half hour to do, you know, one, one or two. I can usually knock out about two auditions if they're really prepared. If it's, you know, they've looked at the copy, they they have made different choices, you know. Um, some actors, I think that they think that I can just pull stuff out of them just from what I hear. I can, but I need a little bit more. I need to know, you know, home and more of that person, depending on who the person is, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that. I mean, if it's a first time person, it's gonna take me a little longer, and I say that to actors, it's gonna take me a little longer because I, I don't know. I direct according to when I know you. If I really know you, um, I'll say her name, Sissy Jones. So I really know her now. So I can go ahead and go, okay, here are the events that I've known we've talked about, or I know of you. I need you to go there now, bam, read a copy. And then I can take them to a place. Now the one thing that I will say that I don't do is line reads. There's an ongoing joke between me and a coach on the East Coast about Everett doesn't give line reads. 
And the reason why I don't give line reads is because of the fact that I'm not going to be in the booth with you when you booked a job. And so each coach some that I know of, they, they, they kind of guide them and maybe feed the lines to them as to what they want. I say to the actor, it's not my interpretation, it's your interpretation. And besides, when you're in that booth, you're gonna be you're gonna have to be on your toes and you have to be, you know, moving really quickly. I'm not gonna be there to say, hey, do this or hey, do that. And I did have a client that walked into a session and was like, oh my God, Everett's not here. <laughs> okay, so Everett, you always seem to be go, go, going. How do you recharge? What do you do to recharge yourself? <laughs> you will anything. not believe what I do to recharge. I actually meditate. I meditate seven days a week. Literally meditate seven days a week. That calms me down. Um, I, it, it was a process that I learned. And it took me to a place where I'm like, oh my God, okay. It actually keeps me focused as to what's happening because things come to you yeah, they do. when you're still. So meditation works wonders. That's the first thing I do. Um, I run on the beach once a week just to shake my body. I had somebody specifically tell me, you need to go shake your body. That way, let the energy, let the sun hit you for at least 15 minutes to recharge. Um, a lot of people don't know that I'm a spiritual person, so I go to church 7 a.m. every Sunday. <laughs> One hour. <laughs> so that grounds me. Uh, and the last thing is um, alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol does wonders for the body. <laughs> so yes, you don't want to overdo it, but just enough where you'll be just all right. Take two, more broken up. On, yeah, because the Eastern Europeans and stuff is really choppy the way they speak. Okay. You know, so don't sound like an American, sound like them. And stay here in your lower register, 40s to 50s. Welcome. Oh, welcome. Welcome, come in. Yes, collected from my years of travel to the far ends of Amphibia and beyond. I have seen and heard it all. <laughs> hmm, no? Let me see. Not exactly. Interesting. Interesting indeed. She stepped into that. You stepped into that. Yeah. It's that one. So yeah, it's yeah, there yeah, to yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it goes up to here. Yeah. All right, we'll just hold on to that. Yeah. That's the one I like. All right. Yeah. <laughs>